The Rootworks handlebar bag was a Kickstarter project that absolutely crushed its goal. It got funded within a couple hours and it became a bit of a viral sensation on the bike Instagrams. I've been testing one out the last couple weeks. Is it worth the hype? Let's get into it in this video. Before we get into the bag itself, it's worth taking a little bit of time on the mount, which I think is one of the most unique things about this bag or this bag system. It's made out of aluminum and bolts directly to your bike's handlebar. The overall footprint and size is fairly small. Let's compare that to one of the most popular mounts on the bike market, and that is the Click Fix. Click Fix is perfectly functional. It's been super reliable, but it's actually not my favorite mount. For one, every time you install it, it's a bit of a production. It's not just four easy bolts. And then there is this thing, which is a anti-rotation wire. If you look closely at it, every time you remove it and put it on a different bike, it gets crushed. All that to say is that the Click Fix works great, but is a bit cumbersome if you have to move it from bike to bike to bike. In contrast, the Rootworks mount is really easy. It's only It only takes four bolts, no anti-rotation wire you have to deal with. And I found in my experience so far that it will keep the bag level and won't budge. I think the only other aluminum mount on the market is the one for the Arkell handlebar bags. Those work great, but they're proprietary. I've only ever seen them used with an Arkell handlebar bag. So for me, I'm super stoked to see another option out there. So moving on to the bag, it's pretty straightforward. It has kind of a smallish boxy rando shape, which you guys know that I love. It has a fabric body. I believe it's Cordura, so it does offer some water resistance. On the sides, there are these little itty bitty uh, external pockets, which are good for putting tools or your keys. Another nice touch are these rails on the side of the bag that allow you to add more accessories like a light mount. I think the big story here is this hard shell top. This is pretty unique and I think it solves a, I wouldn't say a problem, but it makes this portion of a handlebar bag more useful. And by that, I mean most traditional rando bags have some kind of a translucent map case here, but it's 2021, a lot more people are using phones or GPS devices. So this part largely gets unused. As a fun side note, be sure to check out my Garmin hack video where I take a belt clip and adhere a Garmin mount to it so that you can make any handlebar bag with a map case a digital device compatible, let's say. Back to the Routeworks bag. This part here is completely modular. Right now it has a quad lock mount, but you can put a Garmin mount, a Wahoo mount, a K-Edge mount, whatever electronic device is out there that you want to attach to the top of your handlebar bag. Also on the top, as well as the bottom, it does have some elastic cordage. So if you don't have an electronic device on here at the moment, you can tuck things under the cordage like a spare layer. To get inside the bag, there is a little lever here, nice kind of mechanical click, and that gives you access to the main compartment. Small zippered pouch under the hard side and a little bit of organization on the inside. In terms of what you can carry, if you're used to a larger, boxy rando style bag. This is definitely on the small side, but for me, I've been carrying an energy bar, some jerky, a beanie cap, warmer gloves, and a GoPro mount. Kind of the basic things I take when I go out filming and it more or less fills up this bag. One thing to note when you close this bag, uh, I'd assume that you just shut it and the latch would automatically close, but you do have to push it down, then push this lever so it clicks on top of the hard top. I don't know if that's just my sample, but I had assumed that it would shut automatically, but it does take a little bit of help with the thumb. Looking at the back, you can see that hardware and it's fairly small. This essentially hooks onto the rail and this lever compresses everything down so it won't fall off. Simple, easy, and effective. I've taken this bag on our local gravel loop here, which has some paved riding, some forest roads, and a little bit of chunky descending. And the bag remained super stable. It didn't pop off. In my experience so far, the bag was able to maintain its level setting. It didn't droop or get knocked down when I hit some moderate sized bumps. So in terms of how it functions as just a bag, I think it does a pretty awesome job. I really like the ability to mount my phone directly to the top of it. It made it easy to navigate with the phone if you use an app like Ride with GPS. More importantly, take those snaps for the gram. Another really cool feature of this whole system is that, well, it's become a system. In those instances where you don't want to ride with a bag, you can pop it off and put on basically an out front mount. So if you want to ride with just a computer or just with your phone, in my case, I like to ride with a GoPro. You can do that. I think this is brilliant. It really makes the handlebar mount a lot more functional for more people most of the time. With something like the Click Fix, you just had this big plastic thing on your bike. 
if you didn't have a bag. Since I'm a YouTuber, I was really excited about this since I ride with a GoPro often. I paired their out front mount with this cool magnetic uh, GoPro mount. This allows me to shoot some riding footage, but very quickly take it off with the power of magnets and do a little piece to camera. I'll put a link to this magnet thing in the description below. While the action mount adapter is a good idea, it's not quite perfect. Because the fingers of the mount are aluminum, as you screw it in, it doesn't flex in if it were plastic. That's generally a good thing, but that assumes that all the accessories that you're going to use with this are perfectly machined to the right tolerances. I found the fingers of the new GoPro 10 and even this thing were, were sized a little bit small and I had to really wrench this down to keep the camera from flopping around. And even at that, it was a little bit loose. You can see I, I can still move this pretty easily with my thumb. I think that's one of the downsides of having the fingers as a aluminum. You could remedy this by cutting out little plastic spacers to take up those gaps and to make the fitment just a little bit tighter. So before I talk about the pros and cons, if you guys are enjoying this content, please consider joining us on Patreon. It's the best way to support the channel. You get access to lots of cool perks and giveaways and you keep all this bike nerdy content going. So the first big pro is the design. On this channel, I have reviewed a lot of handlebar bags. And this bag has lots of cool tricks up its sleeve that I have not seen in other bags before. I love this modular mount system. It's very, you know, 2021 and beyond. Recognizing that fewer people use paper maps and making it easier to use digital devices of our choice. I also love these side rails, which add more places where you can put accessories. And I love the multi-functionality of the mount. It's not just for the bag, you can put other things on it. It's, it's not all sunshine and roses though. There are some kind of quibbles I have with this bag. The first one is that it is a little rattly. I'm not quite sure if that's from my phone hitting the top or the lid uh, bouncing up and down. I don't want to overstate it. It doesn't actually bother me, but I thought I would just point it out there. If you're someone that absolutely requires the most silent ride, then this bag probably isn't for you. The biggest problem, or rather I should say the, the small big problem, is its size. I can literally fit it in the Swift Paloma. I do think for the money, it's a little bit on the dainty size. Now this might seem uh, big to you if you're a roadie, but as someone who commutes, who goes bike touring and likes to carry stuff on their bike, this bag is definitely uh, on the small size. I'd love to see a larger version, at least as big as the Swift Paloma. I'm hoping as you size up that the mount is still able to hold the bag level. Who knows, maybe that's one of the reasons why it's so small. So you can't overstuff it and overpower the limits of the small mount. But size to me is a bit of a problem. It's barely big enough to carry things that I usually carry to, to film bike reviews. But that's just me. If you're a roadie and you like to travel fast and light and aren't carrying a small studio with you, then this bag might be enough or more than enough. Overall, I think this makes for an awesome bag if you're doing a light and fast event or a long day ride. I think it's a little bit small for touring and bike packing. I'd love to see a little bit more capacity out of this. Regardless, it's cool to see what Rootworks is doing and how they're kind of reimagining the rando bag. That's what I think. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think of this bag? Are any of you guys riding with this? Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? And if you like this content, please join us on Patreon or stop by our web store and pick up a new stem cap. There's also a new print for sale. New print. Arts. As always, keep the supply side down.